celebrating Lord's Day after the Pentecost. Please stand for the call to worship. In gladness we worship, rejoice as we sing. Free hearts and free voices are blessed to bring. The old thankful story shall scale thine abode, thou King of all glory, most bountiful God. Hymn number 402 in the VIP. All praise to our demon Lord. Interested in our minds and hearts and souls. We trust that God's mercy and grace are intended for us too. With faith and in trust, let us make our confession to God. First, we do so in our silent prayer. Let me pray. Lord, we have come to trust in you. I am living on a 
scriptures, and um, then we have someone else, uh, and we will get spirit and to say to someone else that we can read this. Yes. Brothers and sisters, can you join me in praying the collect for today? Let us pray. Generous God, you give us gifts and make them grow. For our faith is small as mustard seed, make it grow to your glory and the flourish of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will now have the Old Testament lesson to be read by Brother Donovan. comes from Genesis 37, reading from 1 to 4 and 12 to 28. Genesis 37, 1 to 4 and 12 to 30 to 28. <clears throat> Jacob settled in the land where his father had lived as an alien, the land of Canaan. This is the story of the family of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a helper to the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, his father's wives, and Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other children because he was the son of his old age, and he had made him a long row with sleeps. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Go to verse 12. Now his brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, are not your brothers pastoring the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. He answered, Here I am. So he said to him, Go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock, and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron. He came to Shechem, and a man found him wandering in the fields. The man asked him, what are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please, where are they pastoring the flock? The man said, They have gone away, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall see that a wild animal has devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands, saying, let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, shed no blood throw him into this pit here in the wilderness but lay no hand on him that he might rescue him out of their hand that he might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to his father so when joseph came to his brothers they stripped him of his robe the long robe with sleeves that he wore and they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty. There was no water in it. 
Then as they sat down to eat and looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gil Gilead with their camels carrying gum, balm and raisin on their way to carry down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, what profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him. For he, he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him, lifting him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver, and they took Joseph to Egypt. This is the word of the Lord. Brother Donovan will help us a little further, but in the meantime, we'll do the responsive reading, and then I'll ask Sister Bogle to do the epistle for me. You may sit for the reading and stand for the glory. It's taken from Psalm 105, verses 1 to 6, and 16 to 22, and then 45b. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the people. His neck was put in a collar of iron. And the Lord he has said, the The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. He made him the To instruct his officials at his pleasure and teach his elders wisdom. Glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and in forever and ever. Amen. May we speak in thanks. Sister Bogle. That is to bring Christ up from the dead. 
But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified. And one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. But there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord. Stand for the singing of the next hymn, Soft as a Voice of an Angel.
according to Matthew chapter 14, reading from verse 22 to verse 33. Glory to you, O God. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time the boat battered by the waves was far from land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking down, came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and we Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying, You of this faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the gospel of Christ. Amen. You may be seated, thanks. Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Jesus' words of comfort to his terrified and fearful disciples. Let us pray. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. Lord, bless your words to our hearts for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, again, I must say I'm happy to be at Gordon Town. It's usually a blessing to be here and to see us all. Knowing the terrifying situation in which we sometimes think we are and how we respond to it. But glory be to God, his word prevail. You know, when we're in trouble, the word of the Lord sounds so nice, don't? When we are sick or not feeling well, and someone come and give us some reassuring words. Oh, sweet is the, the, the sound, sound to our ear, God's words. When we are preparing for exams and we are anxious, oh, sweet it is to have a word of calm and assurance. Today's message, my brothers and sisters, is titled, God Unchanging Words. And we focus on the Gospel reading of Matthew, 14, 22 to 33. I'd love to say that this story is well known. If we are the church long enough, we would have heard this story over and over again. Hence, we are singing some of the songs that we are hearing these things over and over again. So they must be not news, but even good news. The story is well known about the disciples who Jesus put in the boat after feeding 5,000 men plus women and children. And Jesus sent them across in the boat before he dismissed the crowd. Then he dismissed the crowd and went off by himself. We know the other issues that arise that the, the, there was a storm on the sea and so 
they had some little anxieties. Then Jesus came walking on the water and they became frightened. So, we have an idea of what the story is because our focus today will not be on the story itself, even though the story is a part of the service, of the message. But we are going to be focusing on three of those verses in the chapter to look at some statements that Jesus made. And the first verse is verse 27. That is Matthew 14, verse 27. So you can grab your Bibles. Jesus said to the disciples, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Verse 28, he says to Peter, Come. And verse 31, he said, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When we look at these words, my brothers and sisters, consider the circumstance in which they were said and what was happening to the disciples at the time, surely these are beautiful words said by Jesus. And they are God's words. So let us interpret them in a particular way. First of all, God's words are the truth. They are also commands or instructions. They are words of encouragement. They are words of compassion. Words of gentle reprimand and guidance. Words with patience. And words of comfort and assurance and reassurance. My brothers and sisters, here, Brothers and sisters, we are required to exhort one another every day. As long as it is called day, you are called today. So that none of us be hardened by deceitfulness of sin. And you will find that in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13. So, in our daily undertakings, we are required to bring comforting words to bereaved families and persons who are here. We bring encouraging words to those who are preparing for examinations or taking We bring reassuring words to alleviate fear and anxiety and to calm the soul. When we use these words of kindness and compassion, we are building up each other because we can't do it without each other. As much as we are social distancing, as we should, in keeping with the protocols that now entail, we cannot live without each other. Each other to be each other's keeper. When My brothers and sisters, we also must be kept. Brothers and sisters, the way words are used are very, very important. We will recall how Jesus uses words. And we're going to take those statements one at a time to look at how the words were used and what they intended to do. When Jesus said to his disciples, Take heart, it is I. These were certain words of compassion, encouragement, and care. After all, the disciples would need that. They were frightened to the point of mistaking Jesus as a ghost. But what about the first two words? Take heart. Why that is a comforting word, my brothers and sisters, those words were words of command. Jesus was saying to 
art. In other words, do not detain yourself in anxiety and fear. You are going to be required to be the witnesses for Christ when he left this world. You need not practice detaining yourself in a condition which you ought not to be. So take heart, is that is my, um, my instruction that you get out of those that anxiety mode and get into a focus because I am here. Don't you know who I am? I am Jesus your Lord. I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. These disciples were in a training session and this particular story was a part of their training. And so when Jesus said to Peter, because this was the second time he was going to use a word of command, he said to Peter, come. But Jesus said that to Peter in, in, in response to Peter's request for Jesus to give him a command to come to him. Peter was seeking to prove that Jesus was in fact Jesus because they thought he was a ghost. And so he said, well, if you are Jesus, command me to come to you. And Jesus did exactly that. He commanded Peter to come to him. My brothers and sisters, we have no indication in the Bible, nothing has written to say that Peter has ever walked on water or that he was practicing to do so at any time. Therefore, if it is expected that Jesus responded to a command based on Peter's request, then shouldn't Peter be responding without doubt? But we know the human condition. If you are battered at sea, and after all, this was not a cruise liner, where at least perhaps if you are in there, I've never been in one, but perhaps if you have been in there, in one, you may find it that you are not affected so much by the winds and the waves. Certainly this was a boat that carried fishermen. And even though they might have been accustomed, Peter himself, to this experience of strong winds and storm at sea, it, it occurred, it appeared that this particular experience was a difficult one. It was a difficult one that made them very tired, weary, and anxious. So when Jesus responded to him to say, come, I'll take you, my hands are outstretched. I will care for you. Even then, Peter was still in unbelief. And so he got his focus elsewhere. Peter lost his focus and became distracted. And my brothers and sisters, you know what happened to us when we are distracted from God's words. We are going to get into trouble. When we know that what is wrong, we continue to do it because we refuse to do that which is right. We are going to get into trouble. And Peter got into trouble. He became so frightened by the wind and the waves, not remembering that the very good savior had just asked him to come, that he got a little disturbed and began to sink. And Jesus stretched out his hand to reach, reach for him and help him. A command of, of God or any of his command means that we must adhere to them. A command, come to me, means I am with you. I will never leave nor forsake you. And so a doubt can never be created. But my brothers and sisters, we see this very often. How often someone received a call to follow Christ, a call to have a life without a sinful nature being our constant situation, a life to walk with Christ and to receive blessings that we are not aware of yet. And yet, just after we receive that call and started out just like Peter, we come to a few services, maybe one or two after a crusade, we become distracted. Distracted by many things. Wind and storms of association, friendships, money, the need to get on much further with our education if it means that we must stop come to church because we can't come because we study in as if we have never studied in all our lives. 
and robbing us and ourselves and our families of an opportunity of a life in Christ. My brothers and sisters, there will always be storms. There will be storms about everything. And today we are experiencing many storms, some known and called by names, others we do not know. Recently, I've heard some persons complaining about the revision of the scriptures from time to time. Well, yes, the scriptures will be revised from time to time. But it is not that the message has changed. The scriptures have been revised to bring clarity to persons who may want to seek a deeper meaning and are not participating as they should in Bible studies or other form of studying of the Bible in groups or otherwise. However, God's words remain unchanged. We must guard against, however, trying to cherry pick God's words, meaning that we look for those words and verses that will only show us what we want to see and believe. And so it does not address the other areas of our lives that really need significant attention. If we cherry pick the Bible and seek to speak only to those things that we see, then certainly we are setting up ourselves for temptation and sin. We are called to spread scriptural holiness. And I agree that this time might be very difficult to do it because of the way we now operate, given the state of affairs with respect to this virus and the impact that it is having on our lives. However, there are many ways in which we can spread scriptural holiness. Just as we would go on our phones and um, speak to a friend, which is good to keep in touch with each other, especially if we are supportive and giving good words, it's the same way we can spread it the gospel. From time to time, you'll get a lot of forwards, and they are good. But sometimes you must stop. Call the person, give you the forward, and say, did you read it? What's your understanding of it? Or is it that you just get and say, send this to 20 people, you just want to get 20 people quickly? Perhaps because you were told that some blessings will be coming your way. So you just send off the forward so quickly, you haven't read it. I'm going to suggest that because we are called to spread scriptural holiness and we have accepted that charge beginning with me that whenever we receive some forwards and some of them are quite interesting and instructive and they are really God's word we are to call back the person to say I'm happy you sent me this morning I would love to discuss this passage with you particularly if it's not coming from a Christian because let's face it a Christian a person is not practicing God's word and living it each day can't direct a Christian how to do it unless that Christian has fallen out of line with God and somebody elsewhere may see something that you're doing and reminding you that, look, I, I'm not a Christian, but I notice you're doing that. Stop it. And appreciate, when we are spreading scriptural holiness over my sisters and brothers, I want us to focus on these three verses from this chapter which we spoke of that they are verses of the truth verses of commands instructions and gentle reprimand because if we do not have an appreciation of the circumstances in which people are we perhaps are giving them the wrong prescription you know, there's a reason why you have a doctor for almost everything these days. And while I agree that general practitioners still do a wonderful work, there are some type of work that a general practitioner cannot do. And that general practitioner will refer you to the specialist or the person who has training to deal with your case in, the, in a specific way for you to get the best results. It's the same thing with the spreading of the scriptures and to doing God's will and his commands. Otherwise, we will find that we are 
somehow trying to change God's words or using it in a manner in which it was not intended. So, for example, when Jesus came on the water to these terrified disciples, he could have used other words, but that would not help. He had to speak to them in a way that they feel assured and feel that there is love and compassion for them and that he understand the situation in which they are. One of the things that we should do is to use the words appropriately to address the situation. If a child is a problem, we know what we are going to say. If a parent calls us to assist, you know, you don't go there and start to criticize the parent that they have not done a good job. They will know if they do a good job or not. That's not what we are called to do. We are called to look at the situation if we have that skill set and to speak to the parent in a particular way that can help the child and to bring that child, if the child is not in church, into a walk with Christ. We should not try to overload them with information that they cannot understand or appreciate immediately. Rather, let us use a step-by-step -step approach process with careful patience and guidance, just as we saw Jesus did with his disciples. When Jesus spoke a very gentle word, gentle reprimand, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Jesus could have used some other words, you know. You're a slow learner. Or how often should I remind you to keep your faith? But would that have helped? That would probably let Peter sink even more. Such a response would have changed the course of the message that Jesus intended for Peter. Because what Jesus wanted Peter to know that he should understand the importance of exercising patience in the same way that Christ exercised patience with him. Jesus never introduced words of discouragement to the disciples, and the same is expected of us when we are spreading scriptural holiness, because the objective is to build, build up and sustain hope, trust, and faith. These are significant. We would like to recall the, the event leading up to this storm on the sea. If we look at Matthew chapter 14, 31, sorry, 13 to 21, Jesus had just fed 5,000 men plus women and children. It was immediately after they packed those baskets with the leftovers that Jesus sent away his disciples. He put the disciples into the boat and said, go across to the other side. But he had not yet dismissed the crowd. He wanted the disciples to be away first, and that must be, mean something very special, because usually you dismiss the crowd and then your disciples. He sent off the disciples first, and then the crowd. After that, Jesus went to the mountain and he prayed. This was not unusual for Jesus to go away by himself and pray. It was something that he did apparently quite often, and the disciples would have known that. But Jesus did something different. He was very, very silent as to where, as to his whereabouts. Where was he going? How long would he have been there? Was he coming back to see the disciples? At what time and by what means? Because Apparently, there was no other boat there for him, and usually we are not aware that Jesus is rowing by himself. And in the absence of those information, what should be the expectation of the disciples now caught in a storm without Jesus' physical presence? You know, my brothers and sisters, sometimes God is speaking to us, but we are not hearing the words. Perhaps. We are not listening. Or, as I was really enthralled this morning in the service, we are to take our clues from the surrounding circumstances that can help us. God is speaking, but he's not saying the words. But the circumstances existing, we are to draw from that what exactly could he be saying to us. 
Because from the very moment that Jesus sent them off in the boat, those unspoken words were a sign to be calm and to have assurance. For certainly Jesus knew what lies ahead of them. But the disciples, my brothers and sisters, needed to have this experience to understand that God is not going to take them somewhere and lead them somewhere. They were sent out before, 12 of them, and they were told of the challenges that they would run into when they go out. And so they must be prepared. But you see, when you're teaching someone what it means when you want them to learn, you go over and over and over again. This time it was by silence. He said nothing to them. How could Jesus abandon these disciples when they had just experienced the miracle of feeding 5,000 men and women and children? So, from the surrounding circumstance of that miracle, of him going off and dismissing them first before he dismissed the crowd, they should feel, they should learn from the unspoken word that he was saying, go ahead without me. Be assured that I will be with you. Don't feel abandoned. You have just experienced my compassion and care for these people. And so you will not be treated any differently. From that, the disciples ought to have taken some assurance that Jesus will be with them always. They should also took another understanding from that. That God is mightier than the sea and the waves. And so nothing could overpower them when God is with them. When God, Jesus finally got into the boat with Peter and the other disciples, they were to witness another miracle. At this time, there was calm, serene, peace. And the disciples fell to their feet and worshipped Jesus, exclaiming, Truly, you are the Son of God. My brothers and sisters, the disciples used these very words to comfort themselves, even though they, did not, they may not have been aware of it. For indeed, it is God's word that Jesus is the Son of God, a name that would not be changed, because it is this name, the name of the Lord Jesus, that they would bear in their witness to the world. So, the words of God are not going to change. Even if they are written differently or revised for clarity, the message remains the same. That's one thing that's not going to be changed. We agree over that we live in changing times. The world will always be changing because of people's way of doing things. There are going to be new development. There are going to be exciting discoveries. Some of these are from God, certainly, because we can't get them unless He placed them in a way that we should get them. But having living in these changed times, particularly at this time, when we are just in the middle of this virus and we are not too sure what is going to happen. As church people, as Christians, we stick to the law and we continue to obey them. So we are not going to go out of our way. We ought not to, to do something that will put our church and ourselves at risk. Risking our lives and risking the lives of others. And when the church does it, we are not going to applaud because it ought not to be done. However, what is required at this time is that we must evangelize because there are a lot of things happening now. There's a lot of people who do not know God and they don't understand God. Many are without hope. There is frustration disbelief and unbelief and discouragement. We might say we don't see it too close to us. Perhaps we are not looking at the surrounding circumstances or listening to it. If we are watching the TV, yes, we would see in the United States where persons 
who are not poor people in the general sense, now have to be on a food line because we're living in very different times. All that you had accumulated yesterday disappeared last night. And so we have to take the word of Christ to everyone. Well, we can't do it in crusades anymore because that's a crowd. And we can't do it in big numbers. But we have the opportunity to bring even one person to Christ. And we know what it is like when you find one lost sheep. The others who were who are never lost is not as significant as this one lost sheep that we can talk to. We mentioned before that um, we have the opportunities through these forwards to call people back, to find out, why are you sending it to me? What has it done for you? Do you have a situation that you'd like me to talk to you? Or do you see a situation with me that you'd like to talk to? Look at them, don't just click them and, or click them off, read some of them. Even if someone said it just to say a blessing for the Thursday, call the person back and say, how have you been blessed today? What special blessings have you received? And you might want to share yours, because to be alive and not being affected by this virus is indeed a significant blessing. We have the opportunity to use God's words effectively and wisely. We are to do so by adopting the manner in which Jesus used them. We are to use them because they are the truth, and the truth is what will set us free. And we all need to be free. We must use them over to encourage, to guide, use them patiently, gentle reprimanding. And if you are not yet at that stage to reprimand anybody, don't do it because you are not going to win that soul that we so badly want to have come to Christ. And we are to use words of assurance, compassion, and care. For my brothers and sisters, when you encounter a weakening faith, so when you go down the road, someone say to you that she has just lost her job and the company just can't continue to keep them because of the lack of business and the slow growth, what exactly are you going to say to them? When they are experiencing the storms of job loss, financial loss, uncertainty, illness, what words are we using to keep them faithful as we try to restore or build the faith of others? My brothers and sisters, we should never underestimate the power to build each other's spirit. All words of encouragement must reflect care and compassion, and it must avoid words that will break one's spirit. We are not to leave them in doubt and fears. We notice that Christ didn't allow Peter to continue in this doubt and fear business. He commanded them gently and he speak to them with compassion. And if we are not compassionate, then we do not earn the right to be speaking to others if we can't build them because someone must have built us to where we are. Where words of comfort may require us to be silent, we must take some other action. You know, sometimes you go to see someone who is ill, and that condition, it behoves you not to say anything. Perhaps just a silent prayer in your mind and sit there with the person, if you're allowed to touch the person, and the person can hold your hand if that is a possibility. But just to be there sitting with the person for an extended time may very well be the remedy than for you to speak words. Because if you start to ask them what the doctor say, then you know think you'll get better tomorrow. Then I'm, how is that going to help the person if we are, we are not bringing hope and faith to that person's life? When Jesus went to his disciples walking on the water, it was to bring to them the reality of his presence. Having misread him to be a ghost, Jesus brought them the remarkable words of the upward chair. It is I, do not be afraid. But Jesus went on further. While Peter was sinking, he stretched out his hand and helped him. This is a season for us, my brothers and sisters, to get into God's words. 
and I know here at Garden Town, I have participated in some of your Bible studies, so I know that it is going very well. But not everyone can participate in a Bible study. Some persons do not have the means um, and the relevant equipment to do so. It doesn't mean that you can't study the Bible. Because if you have a telephone and you put on a small amount, rather than use it that day for something other than dealing with God's word, you can use it that five minutes for a simple communication with one of your church brothers or sisters just for a short talk and to just talk about the word of God to build, strengthen and to keep us close to each other where their physical distance is obvious and we are not affected. The, and the reason for getting into God's words is that we will learn more about them we will understand them and how they are to be used. We are to practice words of encouragement, words spoken and words in silence as we build each other up and remain faithful. One of the commentators on this passage, Matthew 14, 22 to 33, Matthew Henry, said that nothing ought to affright those who have Christ near them, knowing that he is theirs. We know that Christ is ours, and so we are not going to allow the changing circumstances for us to do anything other than to continue or to become agents for a closer walk with our Lord Jesus and to be more deeply rooted in his word. We are to strengthen the feeble hands, steady knees, steady the knees that give way, and say to those with fearful hearts, be strong and do not fear as we remain patient even in this time of suffering. My brothers and sisters, we are here today, all of us, and perhaps we are all persons who have been saved already, and so we are on our journey, perhaps different stages of our journey, and along that stage, along that journey, we need additional assistance. There may be others who have not yet accepted Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And that is indeed a wonderful experience to have. What joy, what peace. And so, I ask today, if there is anyone here who has not yet accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior, what a good time it is to do so. You don't have to move from where you're sitting. If it's difficult for you, you can just raise your hand. And if there are those among us who are struggling in the walk, perhaps weakening faith, circumstances that exist today make our conditions very difficult for us to cope, we can't go to everybody and tell them, but you want to have a support, a life support, where we can join in prayer, on our phones or by other means, you can also raise your hand or come to the altar. We pray that God's word has impacted your hearts and that you will continue to do so as we look around to see if there's any. So we give God thanks for his words today Words offered to guide us, to bring us comfort, to keep us in touch and in sync with him and in with each other. Words to build up, words of assurance and words of love. We ask God to continue to guide and keep us in his grace as we continue to be faithful people of his. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. The notices, birthdays, and up there.
Angel in the circuit in Membran, Providence Methodist Church. But, and she's no stranger to us. So we want to thank her. So we want to thank her for being with us this morning and to giving us the, a new way at looking at that passage. Jesus walking on the water and Peter's doubt. And we understand Peter very well because so many of us are like Peter. So many of us. You know, we start out strong and then things start happening. And the next thing you know, you know, the strength of the disappear. So we thank God for that word that reminds us this morning. We have to trust God. Trust God as we go through these times. These are uncertain times, challenging times. But you know, we have a course that says, with God in the vessel, yes. my God is gone. Every time I say that, I remember very living from Malcolm. That was his mantra. With Christ in the vessel, we can smile at the storm. So welcome to the pulpit, Sister Audrey. I will pray for you and for your family. Thank you so much. Is there anybody with us this morning who watched me for the first time? With us this morning, first time watching us? Yes? Okay. So you need to introduce, yes, take off the mask a little bit so we can hear you when you introduce yourself. Um, good afternoon. I'm Keisha I'm from Westmoreland. I'm visiting this is over here. Um, she has been a close friend for a long time, so we can do this for the weekend. So Welcome, Keisha Lee. All the way from Westmoreland. That's my throw over here. No. Okay. Welcome to Gordon Methodist. And whenever you're in the area, you know, you just come and visit with us. Welcome. And then Sister Lucy, I don't know if anybody, the first I see you, you know, for a lot. Is the first they're coming out? Okay. Because I was wondering, you know, she was over in Farring for a long time. The COVID tied up the over there. She came back home and we're seeing her back in worship this morning. Welcome, Sister Lucy. Welcome. I'm sure we'll catch up on all of the news. Afterwards, Maybe good to see you. Oh, she was in quarantine. Yes. Oh, they had you locked up. <laughs> Unobedient to you. <laughs> That's why you couldn't come out. No, okay, so you're free now. And I went to Westmoreland to learn my brother. Oh, yes, you had a brother who passed. That's right. So you're free now. Yes. Okay, welcome. And good to see everybody else here worshiping this morning. And just a quick reminder, remember, you cannot come into the sanctuary without the masks. And I want to appeal to my young people in particular. It's not a joke business, right? Some people say COVID now keep. Excuse me, Thomas is third, right? COVID now, COVID keeping. So please, please, see the numbers are they spiking? You saw the real numbers are now? Please, 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 wear the mask. You're coming into the worship, you have to put the mask on. I'm going to be saying, no, you can't come in. Because we have to get that far. We have to get that straight. Um, I just saw those of you in the chat room, you saw the note sent out yesterday. The police can pop in any time just to check on us. And believe you me, we don't want to see ourselves in the news for that type of thing. So just try to, as best as we can, to adhere to the protocols, all right? Wear the mask, do the washing, the sanitizing as we come in. There's a sanitizer up here, there's another door at the back, and of course, we need to be taking those temperature checks. And we're not pointing the guns at your heads. We're going to take the temperature by pointing at your, at your arms, at your wrists, or somewhere, not at your heads. I, I was reading an article the other day about the bad we don't want our children growing up to be pointing guns at their heads. So we're going to change it and point the gun somewhere else. All right? So please, just remember that. You just really try and make the effort to um, wear the mask, do the hand sanitizer, and the social distancing. I say we try our best to do it there. We're not being so badly. You know, so we need to keep it up. All right. Um, as you... Um, Sister Audrey mentioned earlier, we do have a Bible study on on a Wednesday evening. Listen, we know things are rough, you know. So everybody can buy the, the, um, the, the credit 
to get the service to go on the Wi-Fi to, um, to tune in. But guess what? Save, you have a whole week to save. So if you save a hundred dollars a day, by the time the rent will come out, you have a five hundred dollar. Put on the day. I don't know. I don't know if it's as much as that. But we have to make the effort and tune into. I saw Sister Lucille. Um, week for last, I believe. Yes, the trip was in the country. Right, right. You know, we just made that. But I've seen Sister Paul and leverage on time to time. Sister um, Murdell and so on. But we want to encourage as many of us. One one day I saw a Sister thing on and then she just disappeared. Besides Sister Bobby. Yes, I'm getting there. Marlene. But you know what? Right? Merlin, right. Um, yes, sign on is 7.30. We are started at 7, but we shift back to 7.30. Some persons ask for the extra half an hour because they want to watch the news at 7 o'clock. So this is why we are pushed back by the half an hour. So please let us make the effort to sign on at 7.30 for the Bible study. Um, as we're leaving us. And those of you who joined last week, you know, the same group. In fact, he had a break in his home. You know, he has moved into a new house. Right there at UTC, but he's now into the president's house. And they broke in. The very night. They moved in the night? Okay. Very late morning, early morning, they broke in. That his life is fine, his wife is fine. But they took his laptop with all of his administrative, you know, work and so on. What we pray, are we give God thanks that they were not ready. It could have been much worse. So it's supposed to show you with COVID, life still goes on, right? So this, 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 the thieves still have a job to do. So this is why we have to protect ourselves and be alert at all times. So we want to pray for him and for Ms. Zola at a time like this. Also, on Friday coming, the Gordon Citizens Association is having their Pineapple Festival at, well, that's the 14th of August, at the St. Martin de Porres Primary School grounds. That's Friday coming. Now, those grounds are big, so you can social distance. You can wear your mask. Please, as many of you as possible, give the, lend your support to the activity, to the community activity and they want to make an annual one. So we want to see as many of us as possible to go and support the venture. That's Friday at 10 o'clock. Friday coming at 10 o'clock. That's the Pineapple Festival. Okay. Then we want to remember our sick and our shut in members. Now, you know, if we so anxious and we up and about, can you imagine them now? We can't leave home. Nobody not seeing them and so on. Let us call them. Let them know we remember them. Right? Get the numbers. Ask family and friends the numbers and get telephone call. So they recognize that the church remembers them. So please just do that as best as you can. Who, who are the persons celebrating a birthday today during the course of this week coming up? Any birthday persons? No birthdays. Anybody celebrating a, an anniversary, wedding anniversary? No wedding anniversary. Yeah, all the so hot for wedding anniversaries. Yeah. All right. So your offering now is going to be received for the work.
Lord God, you're a good God. You are a faithful God. And Lord, you continue to bless us day by day. As the songwriter says, morning by morning, new mercies we see. And so Lord, here we are today, giving of our financial gifts. Lord, we ask you just to take these gifts and take us. And together, Lord, use us and our gifts so that, Lord, your work here on this earth may be extended. This we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. that could cause harm for the cause of Christ. And Lord, we pray, we pray that you raise up leaders who will serve you faithfully at all cost. Father, we pray for our country. We pray for Jamaica and for all those who are in authority and leadership. We pray that you would give them your mind and surround them with godly counselors who will exercise integrity and work for justice, morality, and freedom. Help them to esteem you, O Lord, and to do that which is right in your sight. Lord, we pray for those who are hurting, the lonely, the sick, the bereaved, and those who are imprisoned behind both visible and invisible walls. Send your comfort, your peace, and your calming presence to those who are without hope. Protect the defenseless and hold them close to your heart. Lord, we pray for those who are present here today and ask that you will continue to guide them, keep them in your loving care. As they are here Sunday after Sunday, Lord, in spite of the difficulties that obtain as well. They come because they want to be in fellowship with you, but with each other physically. Guide them and guard them and protect them from any illness or anything that will seek to come up against them so that they can continue to hear your words in the way that they choose to hear it and to proclaim them to others. We bless anyone here who will be celebrating a birthday, an anniversary, those who may be going to a new job, and we pray, Lord, that your peace and love and grace will be them all. We pray for a good week ahead, that the virus, the COVID-19, will be cauterized and lessened. And I pray, Lord, that you will continue to, come to observe the protocols and to lessen the spread of this virus. And so that we will be strong in your peace and listen to your word to be our God. This we pray in the precious and holy name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord's Prayer.
different words.